God knows his call for you on your life. And he's very interested in fulfilling that call through your life. And so what he is interested in really right now is your character. And so what we're going to go through is three kind of keys to unlock uh, your potential right now and to get you unstuck from where you're at right now. Welcome to Three Keys to Getting Unstuck. I'm Lisa Bevere, and I am here today with my second born son, yep. Austin Bevere. That's and man. Austin, I'm super excited. I really feel like we are gonna give people something that's gonna equip them with what they need to get unstuck. And you've actually really spearheaded this. Yep. I would love you just to talk about your passion for this. Well, like the last two years has been just a discovery of what really helps me move forward in life. What, what am I missing? If I wanna move the dial in my relationship with God or just my work or whatever relationships with other people, what are some key things that might be blocking me? And so we came up with these, these three keys on how to get unstuck. And can I just say this as your mom? I am super proud of you, Thank you. because I've watched you be diligent. And what you've actually really done is you've simplified something mm -hmm. that actually took you a lot of time. So I'm going to open up with a question, and I'm actually going to flip that question to you. Are you living to your full potential? And I think actually any of us can be honest that we're probably not yeah. living to our yeah. full potential because our potential is absolutely massive. Yes. And yet there's an incredible longing for everyone to live at a higher level. They know they were created for something more than they've ever seen. We watch what happens in the Bible. We see that it's all about heroes. You've got David. Yep. David is the man. David is who we talk about. He's a favorite. Doesn't mean he's perfect. Nope. But mm -hmm. he is the man, and he, he maximizes the potential. And people want to emulate him. They want yes. to be like him. They because they connect with him. Exactly. Yeah. They connect with the greatness that God put on his life. And he's somebody that we can look at as somebody who has potential. Abraham. Okay, mm -hmm. let's just be honest. Our father of the faith made a whole lot of mess ups. Yes. I mean, this whole Hagar idea, some of the ideas, some of the things he did, taking Lot when he wasn't supposed to take. Yeah. But here's what I love. The Bible says about Abraham that when he was a nobody, he gave God permission to make him a somebody mm -hmm. by yeah. faith. And that's what we're talking about. That is that potential. Mm -hmm. Right now, you may feel like you're a nobody, but God is actually saying, I just, I just need you to give me permission to make you a somebody. Gideon, you know, least amazing. of the tribe, amazing hiding. Story. Yeah. <laughs> yes, amazing story. You know, crazy battle strategies, breaking pots and fire. I mean, who wins a battle without any weapons? Yeah. But yeah. Gideon did. And then Esther, the one that is the favorite of all the girls, <laughs> Esther, who gets two years yeah. of body spa treatments. Who wouldn't be godly after that? <laughs> but Esther, this amazing woman of potential, mm -hmm. potential. And yet she was an orphan, and she had to hide her true identity for years. Yeah, I mean, even beyond the Bible, you got, you got sports stars, the people that we love are like your LeBron Jameses, depending on what, who's your favorite sports team. Yeah, let's just all Tom say they're Brady. all amazing. They're all great though. You have to respect their, their game. Yeah. Um, Roger Federer, and if you ask someone, hey, like who's the 76th best tennis player in the world? Nobody's probably gonna know. Like, yeah. And so people really wanna emulate the superstars and, and because we all believe we have that kind of potential and you see it in movies too. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean Wonder Woman. You guys took me Wonder my Woman. birthday to see Wonder yes, Woman. Yes. It wasn't called Average Woman. It was called Wonder yeah. Woman. It appealed to every woman's desire to actually have a cause in her life, to have a sword and possibly work out. But Wonder Woman was an average woman. She was Wonder Woman. And there's other some favorite movies that yeah. I know you boys love. Well, my, one of my favorites when I was growing up was Star Wars. And uh, I think the reason why I liked it is I, I very much loved the transition of Luke Skywalker, how he went from being a moisture farmer to figuring out that he- A whining special, moisture farmer. Yeah, he was, he was a whiny little brat and they figured out he had this amazing ability and then he saves the galaxy. Like that's, that's a massive story. That's a lot story. of potential. And, and in life, we, in, as we watch these movies and see these superstars, we wanna emulate them and be like them because I feel like we all believe we have massive potential in mm -hmm. our lives. And so I remember, um, like early on, probably in my early 20s, I began to realize that I might not be living up to my full potential, and it really bothered me. Um, I remember I had a quote that would go through my head uh, because, I, because, like, I, I felt like I felt like 
I should be doing more in my life. I felt like I had a great calling. I feel like I feel like I should be further. But I, to be honest, I wasn't even sure what my calling was. I wasn't even sure, sure where further was. But I just felt like something was missing. Mm-hmm. And I remember there's a quote that would play in my head repeatedly, and it was by Anakin Skywalker. Uh, which is, um, of course, who we should quote. Yeah, yeah, no. And so this is the quote. Something's happening. I'm not the Jedi I should be. And I had that. I was like... Man, when I was a kid, I felt like this, I was this amazing Jedi, but I feel like I'm living <laughs> so below what I could actually be. And I feel like a lot of us have that, that tension between, I feel like I'm capable of so much more, but I'm not quite there. You know, so, can, can I just like put a punctuation on that? Yeah. You know, over the last two years, I've had the privilege of standing in front of probably close to 100,000 millennials. And this is what they all are saying. Yeah. I am not the Jedi I could be. Yeah, no, you know, no. they know that. And they, here's, what they, here's what's going on. They know, they know, Austin, that God has his hand on their life for something significant, yeah. but they have absolutely no idea and what that is. Yeah. And so I think you're speaking to a huge need right now. Yeah, and, I, and even just to affirm you, like, God knows his call for you on your life, and he's very interested in fulfilling that call through your life. And so what he is interested in really right now is your character. And so what we're gonna go through is three kind of keys to unlock uh, your potential right now and to get you unstuck from where you're at right now. And so we're gonna dive into the first one, which is to lead your emotions. Yeah, wait, so lead your emotions, not be led by your emotions? No, no, no. lead your my feelings, emotions. My feelings can't take me hostage? No, uh-uh. Yeah, so tell me about how you realized this. It, this this would be actually a key in making this switch, Austin. What was the turning this point was, in your life? This was the first key that I discovered. And so just to give you some backstory, I rededicated my life about 10 years ago. And uh, I remember when that happened, I felt the love of God for the first time in my entire life. And it was amazing. And I would go into my quiet times, and God would just be there ready, like just emanating, and it was amazing. And, and I felt that every day when I go in my quiet time. But after some time, those feelings started to subside. Mm-hmm. And I remember thinking like, what have I done wrong? Like, yeah. did, did I mess up? Why is God seem distant? Why, am not, why am I not feeling his love? And I, I remember almost feeling like the Holy Spirit saying, Austin, I want you to learn how to move past your feelings. And I didn't want to do it, though, like, because I, 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 like those I, I was like, I love this. I, I, and so I, be, I just kept kind of getting stuck reading the same like verses and listening to the same Christian songs and the same books. The ones that I had really been listening to and reading during that time when I was experiencing God's love. And I, I, it was almost like I'd try to go forward and I'd go back to that spot. And I kept getting stuck in that spot. And um, it became very discouraging. I almost felt like paralyzed where I was at because just with my relationship with God, it was like this. If I felt like God loved me, that meant he loved me. That's what it meant in my mind. Mm -hmm. If I felt like he was near me, that meant he was near. But if I felt like he didn't love me, like my own feelings, that meant that he didn't love me. And if Mm -hmm. I felt like he wasn't near that meant he wasn't near. And so, and, and also a big thing that I struggled with as a kid is condemnation. And so if I felt condemned, that meant that God was condemning me. And I was allowing how I felt in the moment to determine what I believed was truth about my relationship with God. And it, it was dangerous because, mm-hmm. because when I would go in my quiet time, whatever I was feeling in that moment was what was reality, what, what, that was truth. And sometimes that happens with us in our relationship with God. It can happen to us when we're trying to make decisions. We can feel confident. It can happen in our marriages. It, it, can, yeah, it can happen anywhere, even in a relationship. Parents, like if you're, if you're yeah. getting in a relationship that um, you're, you see, hey, this could potentially work out. After a while, your feelings are gonna start subsiding and you have to remember the truth about all those amazing things about another person. Oftentimes we want those feelings to be like here all the time. And sometimes that's just not the case. And Mm -hmm. and those are the times where we have to lead our emotions. But anyway, getting ahead of myself, what I realized what I was doing is instead of like letting God's truth be the the anchor for my life, I was allowing my emotions to be the anchor for my life. And I was all over the place. And, that and, and can, that's surprising, Austin, because you're not what I would consider to be an emotional person. Right, right. I, I mean, I have some emotional children. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. We have some high drama. Yeah. I, I, one of them is kind of making dirty looks at me right now. <laughs> and, and I would say your dad and I are both very high yes. emotion people, but you are our like steady, eddy child. And so like, yeah. it's, it's, you know, so it, it really isn't about being up and down, you know, like having drama. 
doesn't no. mean emotion. So like somebody that's not high drama, like you are, could, very stable. Could internalize can this. Can still and internalize, yes, yeah. And still be led by the emotion. That's very much the way. And that was shocking to me because I was like, I know I'm being led my, by my emotions, but I'm surprised this happened because I'm, I'm not a super- Because I'm very logical. Yeah, ex emotionally expressive person. Right. Um, and so uh, I saw, around this time, I saw this equation that really kind of helped me understand mm -hmm. what was happening. And so I want to show this to you real quick. And so the first key to getting unstuck was lead your emotions. And here, here's this equation that um, I saw. And when I saw this, it revolutionized my life. And so if you're writing notes, write this equation down. Screen shoot this. Yes, do, do whatever you need to. So your circumstances plus your beliefs, these two things make up your thought life. What happens to you and what you believe about what happens to you, or just what yeah. you believe, is going to make up the thoughts that you think all day long. And based off of your thoughts, that is what creates your emotions. And so all the emotions that you feel don't come from just random events. They're, just, they're not random. They come from your thoughts. And your emotions then lead to your actions. Yeah. And if you see on this uh, equation, there's an arrow that goes back to your circumstances. And oftentimes, our actions will lead us back to our circumstances. They create our they circumstances. They create your circumstances. Yes. And so uh, when you look at this, Sometimes you can't always control your circumstances, but you can always, you always have the choice to choose what you're going to believe. Mm -hmm. And so as humans, we have like 50 to 70,000 thoughts that go through our brain every single day. And so if you're, if you're just trying to be positive with your thought life, you have to almost control 50 to 70,000 thoughts. That is overwhelming. It is overwhelming, and you probably won't get much done because mm -hmm. you'll just be thinking about what you're thinking about all day. But what, what we came to realize, and what I came to realize was, there are some core beliefs that we can believe about ourselves that if they're off, they will produce tons of thoughts, myriads of thoughts. And But if you can hone in on changing those core beliefs, your thoughts will line up, mm -hmm. and your emotions will line up, and you will start doing the things you want to do and not be led by your emotions in an unhealthy way. Does that make sense? I, I love that. No, it's yeah. so hopeful. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> yeah. No, and it's, it, it makes sense because then if you start having the right thoughts and the right emotional response and the right actions, then yes, the majority of your circumstances are going to change even if they the same things happen your reaction to it is going to be different right and, you know so you can't control what happens to you but you can control your response and i do love that you've taken it not just to try to mental energy but a deeper level of belief yeah. and truth yes so what is truth austin oh well, i think the word of god um, is our anchor for figuring out what truth is and uh john 17 7 i believe it is or sorry john 17 17 says this Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. And there's all, I just, I love this verse, the first part. I think every Christian, we don't want to stay where we're at. We want to grow in that process of sanctification and holiness. Mm -hmm. And part of that, or a big part of that is we're made holy by the truth. Yeah. And it's just, the truth can't sit there. You have to believe the truth about yourself. And, and I love how it affirms that, teach them your word, which is truth. And so if you yeah. wanna know what's the truth, the way God sees you, the way you should see yourself, the way you should see others, is to get into the word and figure out what the word says about you. And you don't have to believe what your emotions are saying in the moment. You don't have to believe what someone else said about you. Right. You have the word of God that you can stand on and say, this is truth about my life. It doesn't matter what my emotions are screaming, this is what I'm gonna believe. And, and there's a lot of empowerment that comes when you're willing to do that, when you're willing to stand on what truth says. Now, does truth change? No, it does not, tra it does yeah. not change. And, and that's the, that's the interesting, interesting thing about emotions is because they're so volatile, um, it can seem like truth is relative or random when you're going off of your emotions. And so it's so good to be anchored on yeah. the truth of the word of God. You know, I've learned... Uh, Truth is a rock, it's not a river. Yeah. And we have a culture right now that thinks that truth is a river, that it can flow with wherever we are going at whatever mm -hmm. tributaries, yeah. but truth is a rock. I love Psalm 119, Austin, it says in verse 105, your word, and this is God's word, this yeah. is truth, is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. I have never seen more people looking for a light and a path and a truth 
full guide. Yeah. So how do you lead your emotions with truth? We realize God's word is truth. We know we need to lead our emotions. How do you lead your emotions with truth? So here's a good test or a good way to kind of turn uh, whatever c circumstance or whatever belief you have around mm -hmm. or, or to turn whatever emotion you have around or locate it. And so here's three simple questions you can ask yourself. So here they are. First, what emotion or emotions am I feeling right now? And so just you, what you can do is just sit down and kind of be like, hey, what am I feeling right now? Am I feeling discouraged? Am I feeling anxious? Am I feeling afraid? Am I happy? Like, what emotion am I feeling? And then the second question to ask is, what circumstance or belief, or it could be the combination of the two, mm -hmm. but what circumstance or belief caused this emotion? Mm -hmm. And that is so helpful to see because you can be in the middle of doing something and you feel awful. And if you just take the time to stop and be like, oh, the reason why I'm feeling this way is because so-and-so said this about me five minutes ago and I didn't address it in the moment. Or yeah. I've been believing this about myself all day and I didn't address it. If you'll just take the time to stop and locate that. You will, you'll be able to turn it around. And then the third thing is, what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say about that specific circumstance, that mm -hmm. specific belief that led you down that path? And in that moment, you can take that thought captive and, and align it with the word of God. You know, when you guys were little, I would get hit with fear a lot. Yeah. And um, and the enemy would just you like... four boys. I that's, had four that's, boys. That's, that's yeah, terrorizing. That's so that <laughs> no, makes sense. But like so. the enemy would say, you know, they're going to get run over by a car. Yeah. They're going to fall off a golf cart. I mean, just like all these different things. And, and Austin, it's so true. I would have the fear come up. Mm -hmm. The images would come into my mind. And when I let them grow unchecked, when I let them grow unchecked, then they would begin to overwhelm me. And I remember when all of a sudden I'd be like, what am I feeling right now? I'm, I'm feeling fear. Yeah. Why am I feeling fear? I, I, what's going on? Do it, it, and then being able to go and say, all right, no, wait a minute. The circumstances that are brought around these emotions, they, they do not control me. The word of God, God has yes. a plan and a destiny. Yep. He has a hope and a future for my children. My children are disciples, taught of the Lord. What does the Bible say it's, about my kids? It's empowering. It says that they're yeah. going to live long and live well. And that my history, my family history is not going to be our legacy. And this shifted everything for me. So these three questions, people can memorize them. And even yep. in the moment Very that is simple. emotionally charged or confusing. They can take a deep breath yep. and arrest their emotions. So I'm super excited. You know, I'm, I, I know what's coming. So yes. it's exciting for me. Listen, in the next video, we're going to show you how to practically, practically renew your mind. Which now, this is huge is, for leading your emotions. And, and this is an actually very simple process. Mm -hmm. This is not complicated. I'm not saying it's easy, but it is a simple process. But very few people actually know how to put this to practice. Yes. And so we're going to give you practical tools. So you're going to be able to do this. And I want you to be on the lookout for this next video because it's going to be coming to you. And here's what's going to happen. In the meantime, we want to hear from you. Yeah. We want your comments. We want your feedback. We want to hear what areas in life you actually are finding challenging, where you, where you want to renew your mind. What are the tools that you're hoping to be able to apply to those specific areas? And if you like this video, we want you to feel free to share it with whoever is across your path. Maybe you've got somebody, just do it right. Don't be like, you need this. Uh, yeah, but yeah. go ahead and just say, I know that God has an amazing potential on your life. And mm -hmm. I want to share these three keys to getting unstuck. So we look forward to hearing from you and we look forward to reconnecting with you in session two.